Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? All right, so the Saints did make a, a bevy of roster moves on Tuesday. Uh, notably, we, we learned that uh, Latavius Murray, Murray present. was signed off the Saints practice squad by the Broncos. We did talk about that on Tuesday's show. Um, it, it's a bummer. Part of me understands. I, well, let me rephrase. I certainly understand from the player's standpoint why he would choose to sign with Denver when the Saints also offered him a spot on the 53. I understand. There's a better opportunity to carry the ball in Denver, especially if Alvin Kamara remains injured and... I'm sorry, excuse me. If Alvin Kamara is returning. If Alvin Kamara is returning and you have Mark Ingram there, Murray's the third option. The counterpart of that argument is, and I would argue, that Murray's a better option than Mark Ingram. And I would have preferred the Saints make him a better offer to stay in place of Mark Ingram, but that's obviously not something they were willing to do. It's a decision they made, they'll live with, and we'll see how the remainder of the season goes. So um, Murray was signed by the Denver Broncos, and then we also learned that linebacker Eric Wilson was signed off the practice squad by the Green Bay Packers. That um, That's not as hard to believe. Um, the Saints, look, with Demario Davis and with Pete Werner, the Saints linebackers, their starting linebackers anyway, are set. And they really like Nafai Sewell, you know, an undrafted rookie who who they signed to the practice squad. We talked a lot about Eric Wilson, and they gave him opportunities at first-team reps throughout camp. And I liked Eric Wilson a lot as a veteran guy that if you needed that third linebacker, think, think, and look, they, and obviously they like guys like Hayden Ellis as well, but think um, uh, Craig Robertson. Think Craig Robertson. Veteran player, great on special teams, could step in and play linebacker if you needed him as well. That role. But if Eric Wilson has an opportunity to go to Green Bay and potentially be a starter and get starter reps, I, I totally understand that one. That that one is that one's easier to stomach than what happened with Latavius Murray being plucked. Murray, prison. I, I, I compared it to like, you left your you left your wallet sitting right there in your center console of your car and you left the door unlocked and someone just pickpocketed you. That's what it felt like with, with Murray. But that wasn't the only roster moves. The most significant roster move is that the Saints have added cornerback Chris Harris Jr. So let me quickly run through the other things that happened, and I'll come back to Chris Harris because that's what's of significance. So cornerback Demarcus Fields was waived. He, um, Demarcus Fields was uh, an undrafted rookie. They promoted him from the practice squad when Elante Taylor went to IR. But Fields is the one that that shoulders the blame for the uh, for the fake punt. He was basically being a special teamer, and I mean, he was the one who shoulders the blame for for the the, the whiff on the fake punt that the, the Vikings converted. So, so Demarcus Fields was waived. Um, Trey Swilling was also way or released from the practice squad. Uh, cornerback Jordan Brown, who's 26 years old, was with the Saints this summer, had an injury settlement. He's back on the practice squad as is fullback Adam Prentice, and then there's Chris Harris Jr. So I am really interested in the Chris Harris Jr. signing. And maybe part of that, it, it, it makes a little bit of sense, okay? If you connect the dots, you know you've got Marshawn Lattimore and you've got Paulson Adebo. You feel really good about your two outside cornerbacks. I know Lattimore had a rough day, but let's be real. He's one of the best cornerbacks in the league and everybody has a tough day at work at the office from time to time. You got Lattimore, you got Adebo, you got Bradley Roby. Well, Alante Taylor goes to IR, they promote Demarcus Fields. He has a rough day. So you say, look, we're going to waive the young guy. We're going to bring on somebody with some experience. Now, also remember, P.J. Williams, who is designated as a safety with the Saints, has played a lot of nickel or dime whenever, sort of like, even like a, a dime safety, whatever, but how, or, yeah, however they may need that, that sixth defensive back on the field and then a safety when there's been injuries. P.J. has been good in that role, and theoretically, Chris Harris Jr. could slot there as well if you needed him to. And it's it's essentially swapping a, a young guy in DeMarcus Fields for a veteran guy. And when you're 24 years old, uh, you're certainly going to have fresher legs and a little more pep in your step than Chris Harris Jr., who's 30... Uh, who's 33. Yeah, Chris Harris is 33 years old. 
he came into the uh, into the NFL back in 2011. Um, so I mean, he was look. Uh, that was the year where let's see, the Saints drafted P. Rob in 2010 after the Super Bowl. So 2011 was the year they drafted Mark Ingram and Cam Jordan. So Chris Harris has been in the league a, a lo- as long as long as those guys have. So you're talking about a veteran who's been in the league more than a decade. He has played in. I wrote it down earlier today. Chris Harris has played in 162 career games. He's got 22 career interceptions, obviously more than anybody on the Saints roster right now. So you are looking at a veteran guy that you've added who also was a teammate with Bradley Roby in Denver. So a guy that has been around the league for more than a decade, savvy, not a lot that he hasn't seen. You could play him outside. You could play him in the slot. If you need to drop him back and play him in nickel or, or dime packages, you can. So you have a versatile guy who's been around the league. It just provides something that, you know, DeMarcus Fields didn't have, which is experience and a veteran presence in the secondary. Uh, The hope is you don't need him. I mean, hopefully you're healthy enough come Sunday against Denver to be able to roll with with your guys. But if you need to elevate someone from the practice squad, I'd rather, in this case anyway, be a guy who's played in 162 career games, has played alongside Bradley Roby, and can pretty quickly assimilate in the moment or the stage just isn't going to be too big for him, as it might have been for DeMarcus Field. So the Saints have added uh, Chris Harris Jr. Uh, to, to bolster that secondary, which has had some injuries, obviously with Delonte Taylor, and then with P.J. Williams missing practice on Wednesday. See how the remainder of the week goes, but that's a guy who should be able to pretty quickly pick things up. Um, and remember, I mean, look, it's also worth noting that Dennis Allen, when he was with the Raiders, was in that division while Chris Harris was with the Broncos. So that's a guy who he had to play against and scout against, and he knows him as well. So there's a lot of connective tissue why that makes sense to bring in Chris Harris. Hopefully the Saints don't need it, but if they do, you got a veteran guy you can lean on. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.